Excited to have a special guest here on Live Shopping Talk. We've got Aiton Coter, who is the co-CEO of Vimy. He is the host of the Ecom Pulse podcast. And you are coming to us from Israel. Thank you so much for adjusting your time for us, Aiton. Of course. Uh, we are obviously working with the North American market. So I'm just adjusting my time zone my time zone to, to accommodate the market where we are. So appreciate the time. Thank you so much, Don. It's a pleasure being here. Tell us a little bit about how Vimy is different, perhaps, than some of the other shopping platforms that are out there. Yeah, so Vimy, we just celebrated 10 years since, since founding the company. So we're really excited and happy with how things are evolving. Vimy is in the shoppable video uh, business. We're a technology company, and we provide live shopping solution. And also non-live, like the short form videos, which are Let's categorize them on the social par side of things, right? Obviously, um, what's unique in our platform is the ability to go live, obviously from from the backend, but to do it in a multi-channel way, making shoppable experiences on every channel, not just on the brand's domains, domains uh, website, which is obviously more common practice, whether it's a Shopify platform or BigCommerce or Magento or whatever. But we know how to take those feeds associate products to streams and enable shoppability experiences across TikTok, YouTube, Amazon, obviously, and also other channels in a seamless way. So it's very unique. And obviously we are providing the analytics to support that and having the ability to create kind of a holistic multi-channel exp shoppable experience for brands. There are a lot of brands out there that are maybe watching live shopping talk for the first time that are realizing the need to evolve past just the brick and mortar store. And so maybe starting to integrate more of an e-commerce strategy and then evolving to a live commerce strategy. And you know, um, Aiton, I always wonder if there are brands out there that are hesitant to get into live stream shopping because it it almost may feel like they're giving up on their dream of their brick and mortar. And the reality is no one is, is saying you need to give that up. But if you're not sort of projecting and thinking how to future-proof your brand, I think you're doing not only your brand, but your dream a disservice. Correct. I fully agree. And when live shopping started in the U.S. and still it is today, it was part of, let's say, innovation budget or like new projects or things like that. It's, it wasn't in the marketing budget. Like all the social thing, like paid media, right? Influencer marketing, that's all on the, so, on the marketing budgets, which they are still high, as we, know, we all know. Live shopping never got adopted into this marketing funnel because of various reasons. It used to be like the, the notion that it has to be a very high end, you know, very high level of production, very polished level of production, you need to have a professional host. And uh, and then you the, the idea at the beginning was, okay, let's stream it on our own website. The problem that we have in the current era with with e-commerce is that it is very, very difficult to bring customers to your own Shopify or Magento or whatever store. Consumers are everywhere. They're on TikTok, they're on Twitch, YouTube, Amazon, Walmart. So how do we make these experiences across all the entire channel? We saw a lot of difficulties of many brands and of the trying to justify the ROI of these events. And it always was, okay, what is the, you know, the return on investment, like dollar value. And it's not just dollar value. There are a lot of advantages for live shopping, advantages in customer loyalty, in improving conversion rates. Probably you have an inventory or you know, stock you want to get rid of. So you provide a higher discount. And it's like in one event, you can, you can, uh, you can sell a lot of inventory. It's very helpful for customer support, for introducing new new products, uh, launching you know new campaigns, and the idea is that what we believe and what we are trying to educate, of course, together with you, Don, is that hey, live shopping should be like a major part of your marketing budget, right? Because if you do it right in the right budget, it's going to be a very very one of your most eff effective ROI activities. The because of TikTok during the last probably couple of years, like this TikTokification effect, no one cares about the background and you know all the lightning. I mean, it it 
you know, we are leaning towards the authenticity versus the polished type of events, right? People make decisions about the seller like instantly, you know, the, the attention span. I just, I just read in the last, in the last report since TikTok was launched in, in North America is like 1.7 seconds that people make a decision whether to stay on that web page or TikTok uh, video or Instagram reel. So it's all about the seller. The seller needs to be very much involved with the brand. If someone that is from, probably from your own team or someone that is professional and know how to immediately answer the questions that, that uh, shoppers are asking, they know exactly like immediately if you are attending, if you are familiar with the brand and you have some personal connection or emotional connection for the success of these activities. So we need to, I think, relax. These events can be, uh, we, we can be in a higher frequency. It doesn't have to be fully polished and fully scripted. Authenticity is key, but it needs to have the right incentive, the right discount and multi-channel. Let the people buy. Don't force them to join your website for the event. Yeah, stream on your website is great, but you can stream and also on all, all other all other platforms and make sure you have the ability to check out and to pay on other platform as well. You don't have to have a professional. It can be someone internal. Ultimately, you want an authentic expert. You want someone who can answer the questions. And while no, we don't have to necessarily be as polished as perhaps I would have been when I'm in TV home shopping, make it a great customer experience. I do think it's important to make sure that you do your very best not to have distractions. When when I was working in TV home shopping, I mean, we did have to worry about certain things because if we distracted from the product, now all of a sudden that's what everyone is talking about. So these are some of the tricks of the trade. But if you're holding off on live stream shopping, don't because you can get started almost right away. You just need some great products, you need someone to front the show or perhaps two people. And you also need to have great offers. And of course, you need to have solid Wi-Fi or Ethernet hardwire in so you've got a great customer experience. Of course, it needs to be professional, but in a different way than becoming a QVC TV host. It's something else, right? So definitely brands can work with their own best sellers. And this is these are eventually things that you can learn how to you know captivate an audience for 30 minutes. Anyone can learn, right? I mean, they can work with you. You can teach them. These are things that uh, if you allocate some of your team to run these events, then eventually you, you'll get it, right? And also you can work with external professional sellers. This is also fine, but they need to be, a, it should be a longer term engagement. It can't be like one off this this host and you know next week someone else. I think if you if you create a small team that are becoming more and more expert, can be a combination of external and internal team, this can work very, very well. Now, why is it important also to continue with live shopping because attribution today is very, very difficult to measure. When you get finally an order to your e-commerce website, a lot of the cases you don't know why they, where, how they started their journey. Even if you're in an omni-channel scenario and you have an offline brick and mortar store and also in online, you don't know where they saw an ad or maybe it was a word of mouth or maybe they were on a live shopping last week and they got some feeling about the brand and now they want to go there and check it out. Those events are still recorded, right? Like in Vimeo, we are recording 100% of the events. They are located as an embed play, video players within the brand's website and also on all these social and marketplaces. And they, they, if inventory is there, people can still buy. This is why live shopping is important, definitely, um, to, to accelerate uh, brand loyalty and more intimate connection between the brand and the shoppers. Well, I think further to your point, talking about making live stream shopping a larger part of your marketing budget. I was listening to one of your episodes, one of the more recent episodes in your Ecom Pulse podcast, speaking about how one company, I believe, was had doubled their influencer marketing budget. Yeah. Back in my day, um, a lot of companies would dedicate a certain amount of money toward paid media. Everyone hopes for earned media. I don't know what it's like where you are, but at least here in in, in Vancouver and in Canada, all the major stations you have to be something really special to get media for free. Almost yeah. everything now is pay to play. Hey. And so Walmart had me out to their store. I think it was for a holiday gift guide or something like that. They got three hits. Each hit was three minutes. So that's nine minutes of content, which is 
way more than most get. Wow. To get me out to a live eye, you either had to be uh, already uh, an advertising customer, and that was part of your ad buy. If you were not, and it wouldn't matter whether you were Walmart or a ma and pa brick and mortar, it was $5,000. Now, if you dedicated just even like just even that, imagine all the content you have. Not only do you have shoppable content, you have additional content that could be part of your content marketing. It could be snippets of shoppable video or just video that lives on your e-com website. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are so many benefits to live stream shopping. And so I agree with you, Aiton, that when we look at live stream shopping, live commerce, shop, whatever you want to call it, right? All kind of falls under that live commerce or video commerce um, area. We hear live stream shopping a lot. I really believe this is where we need to start thinking. I'm not saying take away the money from the TV advertisers. I'm just saying you need to start balancing out where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck. For sure, for sure. And we are in an era like this year, what I hear from all my guests, it's very difficult on the acquisition side of things. Paid media is becoming more and more expensive. Um, and again, there is no targeting because we are in a cookie list world and Chrome is going to shut down the cookies also in the summer. And so brands are looking for something else. They're they are going to more influencer marketing type of activities or zooming in on retention versus acquisition. Um, and they go to retail media probably, to Amazon, right? Because Amazon, um, although they take a big chunk of your business because of their their revenue share and also the advertising that you need to put there. So I think brands are looking for what can, they can do because paid media is not working as effective as it used to be. And definitely live shopping, it's a must. It's a must and it's create a lot of advantages, not just from the specific event and the ROI of the specific event, but it has like an effect uh, across the entire business operation and uh, overall sentiment for the brand itself. So when I'm trying to get brands and people in general integrated into some element of live stream, often I will say, hey, you know, just get used to going live, do an Instagram live, do a Facebook live. I mean, ultimately, when we talk about that upwards of 30% conversion, we're really talking about using shoppable platforms, right? Live shopping platforms like Vimy. And we know, of course, you deal with the whole e-commerce side. So when it comes to a brand wanting to invest in, in that next level, or maybe that's where they want to start because they want to right out of the gate, start getting that data. What kind of data are you able to give brands and how do you help them optimize their events? Exactly. So, I mean, the integration is seamless. There is a, if it's Shopify or whatever, the, the platform they're currently using with plugins or API integration, I mean, it's very, very easy. It's, it's, it's like plug and play. We pull all the products and we have access to all the uh, product information and SKUs and product description. It's very, very easy on that respect. And then we start streaming. We start getting analytics, not just from the brand, from, from, from the domain of the customer, the website itself, but also from all the different channels, because we have a, a multi-channel uh, menu. So you can stream to your YouTube channel. You can stream to your Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, et cetera, et cetera, to all the platforms. If you use influencers or sellers, Okay, they can stream to their social networks as well, in addition oh, wow. to the brand social network. So it's like we are multiplying the reach. Then we get all, and by the way, we are, we are sharing that like from the brand perspective or from the seller. And it can be like a, a co-host, which is somewhere else in the world or somewhere else in the, in, in, in the US or in Canada. It's like we, we are providing full remote production capabilities, but we're aggregating the the chat interaction to a single console at the back end. So there is one view if the chat system from Facebook and Instagram or TikTok or from the customer website, we aggregate all the chats. So it's very easy to quickly respond to customer questions. We have a real-time analytics of every interaction of everything that is happening across the entire array of channels. And we aggregate that to a, to a data lake where we provide a variety of dashboards and really important reports, real insights that we take to AI system for it to enrich the data, but then also to provide a real-time recommendation and also post-event recommendation. Like uh, definitely we have a built-in like outreach messaging. So saying, hey, we saw that you were in the, you're in the event. We, you even got to the checkout page, but you didn't check out. Here is another 20, 20 points on the loyalty program or if you have some discount on the, on the product. All these uh, messages campaign, it's generated like automatically from the from the system based on 
like segment segmenting variety of behaviors that users are performing because it's video we know so much we know the device we know the connectivity we know the time when they start when they stop any interaction on the chat is obviously you need to log in to be involved in the chat so we have all uh, we, we are providing all the information to the brand so they're in one event even one hour they can have not just like amount but also the quality of data which they don't have in other part of their entire ecosystems so data is very very critical the system provides a lot of insights and analytics and recommendation how to retarget and accelerate the sales even in the post event uh, opportunities yeah i mean that's the key right it's acquiring things even as simple as an email address which may not have been yeah. possible with the reach that you can get when we're talking about where you stream i mean people can watch literally from around the world and i think to have not only that data but have that potential for things like follow up and different marketing tools i think that's also something that you know cannot be lost on some of the benefits of the live stream shopping is Yes, do we all hope for sales? 100%. I mean, we would no one's doing this if they don't hope for sales. But we're in the ground level. And even though you've been, you know, doing this for over a decade, Aiton, we're talking about something that in at least in North America anyway and certainly in Canada where I am, you know, it's emerging and what I'm starting to see are more brands where even 8 months ago when I started my live selling school, didn't they 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 thought it was all like what's happened in China. And I think the fear of, you've seen that TikTok, right? Where you've got the host, the box gets slid over, she picks up the thing and slides it out. Yeah. And I think everyone, <laughs> at least in North America, is like, I don't want to do that. My my customers won't get it. Well, no. great, because that's not how it's happening, at least here. And honestly, those are kind of gimmicky things. I'm not saying sales don't happen in, in China with that creator of course they do but we're talking about the relationship building and not something that is meant to be a viral tiktok i'm starting to see more brands now finally starting to go oh i want to know a little bit more about what's involved how do i get started what is your recommendation for lead time when getting into this live stream shopping space yeah i mean the technology aspect is really not in the like in a bottleneck of any live shopping process usually it's the marketing side of things right and the pre-event is very very important again for marketing perspective you need to promote it you need to send to send you know the, in the newsletter that you you need to announce it you need social media awareness around that just to do some kind of a build up for this event with the right marketing with the right terms that are going to be you know special terms that are going to be available for anyone who joins this this event so usually it starts probably three, four weeks before the event, right? Uh, I'm sure you have your own experience as well, how to structure all these steps, like, you know, what do you do three, four weeks before, what do you do two weeks before, and what do you do even one hour before the event, right? So just providing this last push for reminders to people to, to join via SMS maybe, right? Click here and you're immediately in the event. It's a full 360 degree marketing element where you are looking at just like you would an in-person sale. If you were doing like a clearance sale, you would have lead up to that. You would promote it back in the day in the newspaper. Now it's all digital. It would be social media. Use the influencers in your network. There are so many ways that you can get the word out. And the more you incorporate those tools with your existing partnerships, the more successful your event will be. And Aiden, I think you were right in saying as well, a lot of times people sort of, they do one and then they look at the analytics and they go, okay, success or not success. It's, a, it's, a, it's something you have to keep building upon using the data and the learnings. And that's where platforms like you come in, but also just our own general experience. We know what works based on what didn't work in our last event. And we build and build and build and build and we're always learning. Everything is seamless today with Vimy, for example. Okay, so it's very easy to deploy your shoppable events across the entire platform of social commerce, YouTube, Twitch, marketplaces, anywhere that you want, even on third-party website like your affiliate networks. We can embed that video player very, very easily across the entire. So that's, that's the technology layer, which I think today it's no-brainer. Second, you have, you know, the, let's call it the production layer, right? So relax it's it's let's go for the authentic side of things let's do more and more of these events people are don't, really don't care about what's in the background they care about the the person there they care about the terms 
they, it's you know it's kind of a semi entertainment semi commerce type of experience right so we need to have a right balance of things um of course brands want to respect themselves and they're, they're, so they think they need to invest a lot but it's really you don't need to get to that level from the get go it's it's an ongoing progress and ongoing improvement so that's on the so and of course scripting and what works and how you can excite the audience during the event these are things that you can learn obviously with the right expert so this is on the let's call it the production level host and and all that and then there is the marketing level your marketing team is already there they need to get some more experience how to promote that these events you know before the event during the event and also after the event and because it's multi channel and there is also this affiliate uh type of uh, uh implementation so for example if someone from my facebook network is promoting the link right the event and someone for my network purchased i can get a commission out of it right so it's we can provide all these tools to accelerate success and for even to expand promotion of the of the event and expansion to more and more communities let's say during the event and it's not that complicated to do these are all the technologies and the implementation that are already there so yeah all these layers can be today definitely in 2024 can be streamlined and can be very very easily implemented yeah, I mean, everything when it first came out, everything new is new. And now yeah. we're starting to see more and more uh, adoption of technologies and what used to be complex to us now are like second nature, authenticity over worrying about the backgrounds. I mean, we're talking about progress over perfection. It's like you have to start walking. You might not walk perfectly when you're a baby, but you're walking and then you get better and then you get better and then you start to get the right running shoes and then you start to get the right gear for when it's raining out. We want to make sure that you just take a first step. And so with obviously products, full e-commerce solutions, along with your video commerce like Vimy, that is easier than ever. As we start to wrap this, I want to make sure that people have a chance also to listen to your podcast. It's called the Ecom Pulse podcast. And uh, Aiton, you do such a great job because you, you've interviewed me and thank you for that. But I mean, I'm talking about the, the range of, of industries that I've now been exposed to has been absolutely incredible because it's not just Don is a host or Aiton, you know, runs a software company. Like we're talking about so many different pieces that make this video commerce and live commerce puzzle. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's a but it's it's an ecosystem that uh, we need to be connected to, right? On the production side, on the technology side, on the marketing side, uh, multi-channel. We talk to all the networks. We try to provide uh, and to learn, and this is also impacting our roadmap. I mean, the Ecom Pulse podcast. I usually interview, um, you know, brands both for and, and specifically people from their marketing and head of e-commerce, but also very interesting technology companies that are reshaping the industry, the influencers or the video consultants in various fields. And by the way, you all, you, the episode with you is one of the most successful episodes that we have on the show. So well done. Well done. <laughs> I appreciate that. And we didn't even plan yeah. that. That's a nice plug. Yes, I do yes, appreciate yes. that. Um, Aiden, if you were to fast forward and you're looking, let's say one year from now, where do you think this live commerce or video commerce or live stream shopping space is going to evolve to? When you and I talked, you know, about a year ago on your podcast, it really was more centered around the live commerce. And since then, we've seen more in the way of shoppable video. Yes. Yes. So there are a few things that are influencing this specific uh, use case, uh, live shopping that turns shoppable video, that turns video commerce, that turns social commerce, whatever, right? So a lot of companies raised a lot of money, right? About, let's say, three, four years ago in a few rounds that expected that the whole industry will just explode in two years and there is enough room for a lot of, a lot of companies and it wasn't the case. It's growing and it will continue to grow. I will explain why I think it will continue to grow, but... It, it takes uh, time for it to evolve, right? Because of the various things that we talked about. Because of the privacy also issues that are getting more and more um, re restricted in terms of what brands can do with data and what they cannot, um, then this is another thing that is impacting growth of video going direct to consumers in various ways. Another important thing is the fact that because of, I think TikTok primarily, 
uh, we, the TikTokification effect, right? We are we don't read anymore, okay? So like blogs, PDFs, webinar. I don't think people care too much, right? Even if you register to a webinar that you're very, very interested, you probably, the webinar is in one window and you probably do millions of other things on the other. We all do that, right? I mean, our attention span is reduced, used, reduced it's a continuous process. And because of, you know, all of these reasons, I think video is like the, really is going to be the foundation of any marketing activity. We see that now in a short form video where like the budget, I mean, look at the video production companies, they are in their golden age right now. I mean, the amount of video that is created is like crazy. By the way, in parallel to everything we've discussed, there is a growth of AI tools for creation of video. But I think people are willing, as, as more that, you know, video will be created by AI and live shopping will grow much, much stronger because people will look for the, uh, the human connect connection because we are a social creatures. We like to buy from people. And we will not buy from a bot, right? I always try in my podcast to convince people that we are not a bot. There are real people here. This is why I ask people about their personal life. Fun fact. So we are, I mean, look what happened with the, with like exhibition. I mean, every like shop talk, everyone wants to go because they want to meet face to face, you know, say hello. And it's very, very important. This is why I think live shopping is this creating this emotional experience that is like in the foundation of, a, of any human being. And with the rise of AI, it will also increase the need for, for all these personal one-to-one -to -one or one-to-many interaction. So all of these trends, you know, the privacy issue, um, the time for the market to get to, to, to evolve, cookie-less world, AI growth, I think live shopping is going to be foundation. Any, any sort of like live experiences um, are going to be very, very powerful for sure. And, and that's why I think it's wise for brands, especially growth-driven brands, that are looking at, again, future-proofing their business because you know the benefits of having your brick and mortar. You love welcoming your guests in. You love being able to show yeah. them what you've pulled for them. You love being able to point out fine details and share your brand story. You do that all the time in store. What live stream shopping, live commerce, shoppable video, however you want to verbiage it in whatever way you want to manufacture that shopping experience, it is when we talk about that bridging of the gap between in-person and on through the screen, through technology, that is why it works. People like buying from people, people trust people, and authenticity is a human characteristic. AI, I don't know that they'll... I, there are very smart people out in the tech world, as we know, um, but to be able to create authenticity as a characteristic, I, it's going to be artificial intelligence. It's not going to be authentic, you know, yeah. intelligence. That's that's something that belongs to us humans. And and the more disconnected human wise that we are, the more important we feel. We need to have that connection because we are on our phones. We are constantly and to the benefit of all engaged in technology but we've never been less so you know socially connected in person and so you know having yeah. that actually does future proof i believe your business and so very smart for brands that are looking at you know maintaining the integrity of their business i think aiden I think this is the space that is is an important one. Yeah, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about YouTube shopping. TikTok is the leader in probably hype or buzz that goes two terms. In terms of actual business, like shoppable business, TikTok is probably number six or somewhere. Like the number one is Instagram, number two is YouTube. Right? Remember all those YouTubes that are going as advertising, for example, that you can click and purchase, they redirect you to a product page. But all those YouTubes that uh, brands are uploading. As education or the training, but they're in the show no in the notes, they're providing the links, right? Whether to to their Amazon shop or to their Shopify shop. So YouTube is like also YouTube and Shopify announced the integration lately where you'll be able to uh, include like thumbnails, shoppable thumbnails on the right side of the video player. So you can click and it will redirect you somewhere else, probably to your product page. And that API is still not fully published, but it's 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 it will evolve. So YouTube like is very, very important. It's important to note that TikTok is growing definitely substantially, but also long form video is going is growing a lot. Okay, like YouTube, it's still growing. It's not that TikTok is eating YouTube. Both are 
growing a lot. So long form is very, very important. Obviously, the hope form is something else. We are working with a lot of brands outside of the U.S. and we launch them in the U.S., okay? And the way we launch them in the U.S. is on TikTok. We're not building their Shopify store or, sorry, their e-commerce store. We're not building them Amazon shop because they need advertising. We are building them on TikTok because through video and live on TikTok, organically, you can be a huge player. No one cares about how many followers you have over there, right? Instagram also is trying to change that algorithm. So it's no longer your friends and your specific social networks and connections. It's which video works best, right? And this is the trend, I think, also with all the like Instagram reels, YouTube shorts in general. Yeah, it's an exciting space, one that I'm uh, really happy to be on the front end of. You are smack dab in the middle of it, have hmm. laid the groundwork for people like me and so many brands out there. Um, Aiton, thank you so much for your time. If anyone wants to listen to your podcast, how can they do that? And where could they reach out to get more information as a brand on working with Vimy? Great. So the Vimy, you can reach out. Uh, it's uh, on our website. It's vimmi.net. And my podcast is called Ecom Pulse. It's on all the podcast platform. You can find us. And my LinkedIn also, you can find me at uh, Eitan Kotter, E-I-T-I-N-K-O-T-E-R. I post a lot of uh, interesting stuff. So all things video, all things commerce, this is uh, our sweet spot. Amazing. Thank you so much, Aiton. Thank you, Don. It was a pleasure.